Benjamin is on the right there. We see Blake Davies on the left. And, I mean, both these players have got to be feeling good about themselves. They've had a phenomenal start to this tournament with four wins and one draw. And, I mean, at this stage, it's just got to be confidence. You know, those early round jitters kind of going away a little bit, replaced with, oh, my, my deck's pretty good. I'm quite good with this deck. <laughs> this could be a good tournament for me. Yeah, and another thing about the Volcanian deck is that the regular Volcanian has 130 HP, which is a big number to have in the current metagame. Uh, Zorark GX maxes out at 120 with Riotus beating. Galisopod GX maxes out at 120 with First Impression. And uh, having that 130 HP just makes it so it's actually difficult to knock out just the one prize Volcanian as well. And if you let it use Power Heater enough times, it's going to get enough energy in play where eventually Volcanian's going to take over. Absolutely. I mean, I, I talk a lot about the fact that there is a huge <laughs> difference between 120 and 130. We do see Benjamin has prized two of his... Sorry, two of his two Golisopod GX. So we said it's not maybe the best option for him in this particular game. Well, that's a completely moot point now. <laughs> there is not going to be any Golisopod GX, at least for a couple of turns. They are both in the prizes. Although if we look at the mix here, Benjamin's playing 4-4 four, four Zoroark and 3-2 Golisopod. Clearly, Benjamin is going for a Zoroark deck over Golisopod. That is his focus. Yeah, and we do see the handshake. We're going to start round number six here at the Oceania International Championships. Uh, if you are watching at home, please get on social media. Use the hashtag PlayPokemon. Tell us who you're rooting for in round number six. Is it the Volcanian deck from Blake or Benjamin's Zoroark Galisopod deck? And we do see Benjamin starting here. Not a great start. He just plays an end straight away. Doesn't bench a Pokemon, doesn't attach an energy, doesn't play an item card, just a straight away N. And that's not ideal because it means he's going to draw some stuff here, but there's no more options. What you really want to be doing is playing a few cards, then you play the supporter card, then you play a whole bunch more cards. Oh, he drew two Bridget from that opening game N. As it turns out, he's got to play that Tapu Lele down because you mentioned earlier, one of the decks that really does not mind going second in this current format is Volcanian. And a 60 HP um, Darua, not the most difficult thing to KO. So even though he's already played a supporter, you don't usually want to play a Tapu Lele when you can't play the supporter you get from it. But he's got to have a Pokemon on the bench right now because that Zorua is not guaranteed to be around at the end of Blake's turn. Yeah, Benjamin actually plays four Bridget in his deck, so uh, probably a little heartbreaking to not start with one or a Tapu Lele GX or an Ultra Ball, uh, one of his many ways to pull off the turn one Bridget. Instead, having to settle for the end and, you know, having one Zerua in play versus three or four makes a massive difference. It's almost like you didn't get to go first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, in terms of a turn, I mean, look at his field. He's got a Zorua and a Tapulele on the bench. That's it. That's his entire field. No energy, no tools. I mean, people get that before they've even had their turn. So, not ideal. Now, we do see that he has got the Floatstone on the Volcanian. Now, a Steam Up here would only be doing 50 damage. Is he playing Fighting Fury about in this no. list? Actually, opts for Choice Band instead. Oh, so he would need a second Volcanian EX with a second Steam Up to get the KO here. He is playing a Professor's Letter to search out a couple of basic energy. So if he's got a Zor uh, Volcanian EX here, he will be able to get the turn one KO on the Zorua. Now, that would be huge because it would mean that Benjamin goes into his turn with zero Zorua in the field, which means no Zoroark getting evolved up, no trade abilities. And Benjamin's going into turn two with just a Tapu Lele on the, well, in the active at that stage. So, Blake, he wants that second Volcane in EX. That could be a huge swing early in the game if he's able to pull it off. Well, I got some bad news. Blake's hand is awful. Oh, <laughs> uh, I got excited then, Puka. It was four energy, I think, three energy now, and uh, a Guzma. <laughs> oh, after all that, after all my excitement. Yes. <laughs> Never mind. He was actually trying to figure out if he should uh, play Guzma and attack the Tapu Lele or just play the Floatstone and retreat. And he opted just for the Floatstone to hit the Zerua. 
in this situation. But uh, yeah, his hand is just terrible. I do like the 50 damage on the Zorua then, because it means a choice banded Volcanian attack will then do 160 and get exactly the number to get the KO. So could be worse. Yeah. Could be worse. It's not, you know, that 50 damage is very relevant. It does work out the mass quite nicely. Of course, Benjamin here, this is not much of a turn. He's going to probably evolve the active, although he'd probably like to retreat it first. Apparently, that's not an option. Now he can use trade, but even if he gets a double colorless, he's not getting a KO here. Oh, I would not have field blowered that choice bat, uh, that floatstone off the Volcanian because now there is a possibility of getting a choice band. Of course, the other thing is it removes options. A Guzma put the Volcanian in the active, floatstone free retreats it. So there's reasons to and to not. And like we always say, it's there's many different options here. That floatstone could turn out to be really bad for Blake that it got discarded, or it could turn out to open up a choice band play. We never know what's actually going to be the best play until the game wears on a little bit. Yeah, massive top deck from Blake, though. He draws the Ultra Ball for the turn. So nice. now he can find that Tapu Lele GX and get going. His hand was just unplayable before that, but one top deck gets him the Ultra Ball which leads to Tapu Lele GX, and that's why we see this card in every single deck in the standard format. It <laughs> turns all of your Ultra Ball into supporters, essentially. Uh, drawing that, he gets to search for the Pokemon, which allows him to search for the Professor Sycamore, and his hand went from nothing to now seven cards. Yeah, and that's so good. Like you say, he had very, very little in his hand. Now, he is discarding those energy, which means he is going to try and recover them at some point. He does play a Turtonator, whose Nitro Tank GX can get them all back later on in the game. As it turns out, he does put the energy on the active Volcanian. And, I mean, there is a chance he gets a KO this turn. He'd need two Max Elixir. Uh, I think uh, he's yeah. just charging up for a Steam Artillery on the next turn. Since I think, yeah. Benjamin didn't get a double colorless energy, he can't threaten a riotous beating knockout. Uh, unless he had Professor Kakui or uh, Reverse Valley. And, you know, those cards aren't super common in the Glycopod variant. So uh, he probably thinks his Volcanian is pretty safe, which means next turn he could get a two-prize knockout with his regular Volcanian, and that's a great place to be. Yeah, and I think that's absolutely the play. I mean, Blake does play two Max Elixir, but he only plays two Max Elixir, and he's in no hurry to be super aggressive in this game. He's got the better setup, he's got damage on the board, he's got energy on the board, and of course, he's not being threatened next turn with a knockout of any description from any Pokemon, so that means that he's able to kind of take a couple of turns, do another power heater. Of course, I mentioned Nitro Tank G GX from Turtonator. He's also just got Power Heater from Volcanion. There's many different ways to recover these energy. So unlike we saw with Ryan Saberhouse in the last game, you do not mind discarding energy in this deck. It's so easy to get them back. And now Blake's field is really starting to come together very nicely indeed. Yeah, I think actually one of the biggest traps when you're playing a Volcanion deck is being too aggressive. Uh, usually if you max elixir a bunch of times and attack with a Volcanian EX on the second or third turn of the game, you're actually just not set up enough to close out a game. Uh, if you have all your energy on one Volcanian EX, sure, you'll take some quick knockouts, but then your one Pokemon gets knocked out, your opponent plays an N, and you just kind of fizzle out. Uh, the, the better approach with this Volcanian deck has always been use Power Heater, do some damage, but power up a bunch of attackers. And then once you have two or three Volcanian EX powered up, that's when you move forward. And that's exactly what we see Blake doing in this particular game. He is really setting up his board nicely. And we see Benjamin there. He doesn't have that confident a look right now. He knows he's on the back foot. Now, he does <laughs> play a... Uh, an Ultra Ball there. He's actually got four Zod yes, GX in play. <laughs> so I think it's fair to assume whatever he wants, he's going to draw into it next turn, which is really quite nice. And I suppose it just comes down to what he wants and what he can draw into. Either way, he's certainly got a lot of options right now and a lot of things he can do. But what does he want to do? 
because he's not getting a KO this turn. And I was going to say, it might just be Flying Flip with Tapu Koko just softening up some of those Pokemon to get KOs in the subsequent turns. But also, let's leave a non-GX in the active. If I'm going to let his non-GX or non-EX Volcanion take a prize, it might as well be a prize on a Tapu Koko. And actually, Steam Artillery only does 100. Tapu Koko can take that hit. So Benjamin here playing quite conservatively, but I like this play. Get some damage on the field, but also put up the one Pokemon that, I mean, can't be KO'd unless Blake really starts putting resources into Steam up just to take a single prize. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is it puts the Volcanion in range of Riotous beating. We do see the Max Potion, though. That's a big card uh, in this matchup. The, the one flying flip actually doesn't do a lot against the Volcanian EX. Uh, Zorark GX still falls short, even with a choice band. It'll be 10 short with a Riotus beating for 150. And he does not seem to play any Professor Kukui or any way to add extra damage beyond choice band. So uh, the one flying flip is great against regular Volcanian, but... If he could get two off, that would be beautiful for him. That would be a huge, huge swing in the game, that would, because then he would be able to get a KO with his riotous beating with a choice band. Now, we do see Benjamin there having played the Max Potion. He's actually reset it nicely. He still doesn't have much energy on the field, but he doesn't have much damage on the field. So he's managed to get rid of the damage Blake did. Blake now, he's playing an Ultra Ball, just keeping that setup going. It looks like he's going for his Oranguru, which is quite nice. It's got that ability that allows you to draw until you've got three cards in your hand. And if he's expecting to be taking some prizes in the near future, this will kind of guarantee that he's got some options to keep drawing cards and make sure he's not punished too hard by an end later on. And we also yeah. see a Professor's Letter here, potentially getting ready for some Steam Up action. Yeah, he's managed to draw another terrible hand. <laughs> um, he has no supporter once again. But the, the interesting thing about the way his deck is constructed is it's all about finding energy. He's got three Professor's Letter, four Energy Retrieval, and it's all about doing a very simple thing, finding energy so he can steam up and <laughs> attach energy. And uh, that makes it so he can really play out of a lot of his cards and play into that Instruct ability. So even though his hand is pretty bad once again, Professor's Letter allows him to attach and steam up for the knockout, and then he can at least Ultra Ball for uh, that Orin Guru and use Instruct after playing out most of his cards. Yeah, and I think that's a good play here. Now, we do see there was a steam up coming down from Blake, so Steam Artillery will get the KO against Tapu Koko. And then we actually see a Super Odd coming down here, basically saying... You know what? I'm not going to be recovering energy using Power Heater, so I might as well pop it back into my deck. And interestingly enough, those two Volcanian he's just recovered are the same two he just discarded with Ultra Ball a moment ago. So it wasn't that he wanted to get rid of them, it was that he had to get rid of them. But then Super Odd gets them back, and we're in a situation normal again. Uh, I think he probably didn't want to play the Super Odd, but he doesn't. He has too many cards, so he wants to instruct and try to find a supporter because he still hasn't played one for the turn. So uh, even though he probably would have preferred to save the Super Odd for later, he needs to play the card to get it out of his hand so he can try to draw something better. And he does draw a Guzma, and it yeah. looks like a Professor Sycamore. So oh, those actually, are better. <laughs> yeah, he draw two supporters, both of which were good. And now, I mean, oh, he's still too far away from a GXKO here. He's currently hitting 130. With a second steam up, he'd be up to 160. That's still not getting a KO. Yeah, I think it is just the better play here. Play the Sycamore. Draw yourself some more cards. Keep setting up. He's got the energy retrieval. He's got the max elixir. Plays it, and he does hit it. I mean, he should. He's playing 14 fire energy. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think... Even if he could have gone for a Guzma knockout here, I think Tapu Koko is actually one of the most threatening things on the board. Uh, if it gets one more flying flip off, then your Volcanian EX are just in danger of a choice band riotous beating knockout. So the number one threat for him actually is that Tapu Koko now that one flying flip has already been fired off. Yeah, that is an interesting one. Little 110 HP Pokemon, but actually it is quite damaging. And now, I mean... You know, Benjamin, does he try and recover the Tapu Koko to use another Flying Flip? Because he knows these Volcanian decks generally don't play healing cards. So that damage will tend to stay on the field. Or does he just start going aggressive with his Zoroark, knowing that he's going to fall short pretty much every turn? It is 
it's an awkward situation to be in. Now, he does have a double puzzle of time in hand, so he could use that to recover pretty much any cards he wants to. He's got the double colorless, it looks like, so he'd be able to attack. But there is a big question here of what does he actually do? Now, he could KO the active Volcanian, but that doesn't help him take out the EXs in subsequent turns. Yeah, and we see the absurdity of Zorak GX here. He just traded four times to draw eight additional cards this turn. And looks like he will go for that Tapu Koko once again. And this is going to set up his plays for the future. Uh, in the short term, it's going to allow Blake to take another one prize knockout and go down to an even prize count. But for the longer game, it's going to make it that much easier to knock out those Volcanian EX. And he's going to pair it with that Guzma so he can perhaps disrupt Blake a little bit. Yeah, he's trying to stall for a turn or two here. Keep that Tapulele in the active. Force Blake oh. to have a switching card or an energy. But that Parallel City is huge. Yeah. Blake wants all of those bench Pokemon. Sure does. <laughs> he's got to get rid of one of them, though. And he decides to discard the Oranguru in this situation. Um, he looks like he's changing his mind. Now, of course, oh. they don't have to let him. He did already put it in the discard, but it seems like... You know, fair friendly players won out. He has been allowed to keep the Oranguru. And then we see the flying flip coming down. That was a big parallel city there. Yeah, that, there's no easy choice for Blake in that situation. I actually like keeping Instruct around. Uh, Volcanian can be very weak in the late game uh, against N. So having that out to Instruct later on is going to be a big deal. And he knows that other Volcanian EX is more of a liability then it's worth probably because it'll have the 40 damage on it. Uh, sure, you lose the one energy you committed to it, but in the long run, you're probably going to have to power up a different one anyway. So uh, I, I like dumping that Volcanian EX to the Parallel City, but excellent play from Benjamin forcing his opponent into that tough decision. Yeah, I mean, he's been around a long time. He's a very good player. He's got the tricks. And you saw that was a lot of effort to get that second flying flip off. But now Benjamin's thinking, great, now I can just attack with Zorak every turn and, you know, win the game hopefully in three turns. And let's face it, that's what my, or four turns, that's what my deck is meant to do. That's what I want to do. I don't want to be messing around two hit KO with Zorak. I want to get you into range straight away. And, you know, Tapu Koko is a big, big feature in the Zoroark Golisopod decks. Other Zoroark variants aren't so reliant on the Tapu Koko, but this one really, really is. Um, we see Blake here forced into some awkward decisions. Now he gets the KO on the Tapu Koko again, but now Benjamin is ready to go. Now he's ready to start taking some prizes, and there are six prizes on Blake's field now. Benjamin doesn't have to stop on anything else up. There are six Pokemon that are in range, or six prizes worth of Pokemon, that are in range of a riotous beating, and for Benjamin now, it's just making sure you get double colorless energy every turn, and trying to make sure that Blake doesn't win the game, because of course he's taken the first two prizes. If he can just KO two Zorark in a row, he will win the game regardless of what Benjamin does. Yeah, Choice Ban was the card he was missing, but he did find it off of this trade, and he will need to bench a fifth Pokemon in order to get the knockout as well. Looks like he has Guzma in hand, so there we go. Turns out when you have four Zorark GX drawing eight extra cards every turn, you tend to have the things you need in your hand. Yeah, see, I, when I watch these Zorark decks, when it's four Zorark out, I'm not like, oh, if he gets the choice band. I'm just like, he's going to get the choice band. <laughs> this is how it works. And next KO, it looks like it's going to be a bit of a Golisopod party over on Benjamin's side of the field, <laughs> if he wishes. So it goes up two prizes, and that's big. Both the Volcano and the X now are gone. One fell to the Parallel City, one fell to being KO'd, and now Blake's gone from being two prizes up with a whole bunch of energy on the field and a whole bunch of options to being even on prizes. And, I mean, there's no steam-ups coming out because there's no Volcano and the X on the field. Steam Artillery does 100. That's not enough damage. And he's still got to get rid of that Parallel City, first of all, just in order to actually free up some bent space. Now, he does play a couple copies of Scorched Earth, but it doesn't look like he actually plays any Field Blower, so he's going to need a Scorched Earth to start off here. Yeah, this is a tough choice. Uh, does he want to attack with the Steam Artillery or just use Power Heater to try to power up two Volcanian EX? But uh, that Parallel City is stopping him in his tracks. He needs to get rid of it if he wants to bench 
a second Volcanian EX, or perhaps that Turtonator GX. And so far, he's been unable to find any way to get rid of that Parallel City. Of course, the one option he does have in the near future, maybe if he gets a Turtonator, uses that Nitro Tank GX, and then, you know, sets up a couple Pokemon using that, knowing that Benjamin has no way to get a one-hit KO on 190 HP Turtonator GX. But, of course, even that, it's fine the Turtonator. Get it into the active. Use your attack for a turn to get them set up. And then after that, you can start taking some KOs. Meantime, there's a Tapu Lele. Benjamin can Guzma and take a KO on. There's the non-GX Volcanium. Benjamin can KO. There is the Oranguru that he can KO. And now we're at the stage where it's pretty much on Benjamin. Now we do see the Scorched Earth, which is huge here. Yeah, he finds Scorched Earth. He also has an Ultra Ball in hand, so he can grab another Pokemon if he wants to. Uh, also has Energy Retrieval to make the uh, Ultra Ball discard a, a little less painful. You can play the Energy Retrieval to get back two Energy and then Ultra Ball them away to make the cost a little simpler. Uh, looks like he's going for the Scorched Earth, though. Drawing some extra cards and a big Max Elixir. Which he hits. That's big. Now he's got the second energy on the Volcanian. Now he's starting to build up. And, of course, that Volcanian doesn't have 40 damage worth of flying flips on it. It's got no damage at all, which means it is not getting KO'd next turn. This is what Blake needs. He needs to set up some Volcanian EXs because they can take one-hit KOs on Zoroark. That's how he gets back into favor here because, as it stands, Benjamin's got all the KOs he needs on the field. Blake really needs to start matching this pace because... As it stands, I like Benjamin's position here. Yeah, it seems like Benjamin's in full control of the game. Uh, if he can find Acerola here, I think he the game is almost over. He'll just take that easy knockout off of his board, get a knockout with Riotous beating, and uh, he just has so much card draw with all of these Zorark GX. I mean, let's not forget turn two... Or, sorry, turn three, he had four Zorark GX on the board. <laughs> a little bit unfair. A little no, actually, bit, yeah. You said about Ace Roller, that first trade there drew him an Ace Roller and a Guzma. Of course, the other option he would have is maybe just using a Guzma to bring up that Tapu Lele, get a KO now. I don't think he needs to. It's certainly an option he's got. I like the Ace Roller play myself. Heal that. Um, Zoroark straight up, get the energy back. He's got enough Pokemon on board to KO that non-EX Volcanian and just really retain the control that he's managed to get in this game as he keeps trading and drawing more and more cards. I think he's even got a double puzzle of uh, time. I think he's going for the Guzma on Tapu Lele here. Uh, he's attached the Grass Energy to Wimpod, assuming he's going to get a Glycopod GX out of the prize cards. And then next turn, he can just play Double Colorless Choice Band and crossing cut GX to knock out that Volcanian EX for the game. So uh, excellent planning here from Benjamin. It didn't look like he had any way to knock out a clean Volcanian EX, but we forgot about Galisopod GX, which can just come in for the last knockout. Even though it's weak to fire, it can knock out Volcanian EX in one attack. Yeah, crossing cut does 150 and switches to the bench. You had a choice band on there. You're up to 180. That will work beautifully in terms of that. It's once per game and you can't do it early or you'll give up an easy two prizes. But like we said, Benjamin's such a good player. He knew it was coming. He knew that Wimpod would come in handy. And, you know, it's one of those, well, he'll still need the double colorless and he'll need the choice band and he may need the Guzma. But you know he's going to have all of them. He can trade four times next turn. Although probably three, actually, because this active Zoroark does look like it's about to be KO'd. Yeah, Blake has to play an end here and just cross his fingers, essentially. Um, even though you do have access to a lot of trades, you do go down to two cards. You have to trade and discard some of your cards, so... Uh, finding Galisopod GX, Double Colorless, Choice Band, Guzma to win the game. It's not a given after you've been end down to two cards, even though uh, you're going to draw like seven more cards after the draw <laughs> for the turn and three trades. It's still a lot to find. Oh, absolutely. And it's kind of like a one-turn clock because, of course, Blake really can get a KO on that Tapu Lele. One Steam Up, one Choice Band, Tapu Lele will be KO'd. There's the Choice Band. So, and there's the end. So a Guzma and a single energy for a steam up next turn, or if the uh, choice band gets uh, 
field blow it off or whatever, then two energy for a double steam up. Blake can win the game next turn, so as much as Benjamin is in a position to win on his next turn, it really is a one-turn deal because after that, Blake goes straight back into the driving seat. He has a chance to win the game. This is not a game Benjamin is running away with by any stretch of the imagination. Well, I mean, I think Blake kind of realized... He's got this, the Guzma. This probably isn't going to work out. Uh, as he went to cut Benjamin's deck, he's like, oh, there's like eight cards here. Oh, there's, no. There's no way you don't draw this. This is bad news. <laughs> that is bad news. And we see Blake. He's got the Guzma already ready to go. But I think, like you say, I don't think it's going to matter in the end. Benjamin, all he needs here, double colorless, Galisopod, and a Guzma. And he's got the Guzma already in his hand, and he's got the choice band. So he just needs double colorless, Galisopod, the... and he's got so many trades. Yeah, the thing that could happen, though, is if he draws three cards that he can't trade away, uh, he gets the Galisopod. Uh, he does have two, though, so he can get rid of that, but... He's got so many good cards in his hand. Which one does he throw away with trade? I mean, you've got to think it's the puzzle of time unless he's got multiple Guzma left in his deck, which he must if he's trading it away. Oh, there's double oh, puzzle of time, that's I it. think. Yeah, because now the double, he's got the Galisopod, he's got the double colorless, oh, he he's got the everything. choice band. <laughs> double puzzle, gets the Guzma, and Benjamin wins game one with Crossing Cut GX knocking out that Volcano in EX. And that was a good game. That was a back and forth game. And I like these games where both players are doing their thing. And even though Benjamin won that turn, Blake had the Guzma. If he had one more, if he just drew an energy, he wins next turn. Yeah, another interesting thing is that if that Parallel City had stayed in play, uh, Benjamin's Galisopod actually would have done 20 less damage and would not have been able to get the knockout. So he would have been forced to find a field blower as well. But uh, Parallel City just did so much work against Blake, uh, really messed with his bench because he had to put down that top of Lele GX. So uh, very weird, though, that perhaps Parallel City could have backfired on Benjamin if uh, it had stayed out there too long. But one of the great things about Zorark GX is, yeah, you're drawing a lot of cards with trade, but you're also throwing away cards you don't want to draw later. All those extra copies of Bridget that he's drawing later in the game, he's just trading them away. Uh, so he doesn't draw them later off of an N. All those enhanced hammers that are worthless in this matchup, <laughs> they hit the discard pile so you can draw more cards. So then when Blake tries to go for the big N at the end of the game, you look at Benjamin's deck and it's all great cards that he wants to draw. Yeah, and that is the kind of unsung thing about trade. It's, you know, you, you're thinning out your deck. And one big part of the game, you do need to thin out your deck. It's a big part of this game, trying to make sure that, because we see about an end, you know, people play things like Octillery and they play things like Zoroark to make sure that late game end isn't too punishing for them. But one of the most effective ways to stop a late game end hurting you is just making sure that you don't have those rubbish cards in your deck. Now we do see a couple of Wimpod, Galisopod, Zoroark. So at least there's not going to be a turn free for Zoroark for Benjamin this game. Over on Blake's side of the field, nothing particularly significant. Nothing to, nothing to get too worried about. Yeah, unfortunate for him, he has to start the game with his Tapu Lele GX in game number two. Uh, that is not a great Pokemon to start off with in a Volcanian deck. Typically, you have to burn an energy attachment to retreat it or use one of your precious float stones, which you typically want to save for a Volcanian EX so that it can retreat. But uh, in this spot, he's going to have to use his first attachment on Tapu Lele GX. And he has a bit of an awkward hand as well. Two Professor's Letters and two Professor Sycamore. So he's trying to figure out, uh, how many energy do I want to discard with this Sycamore so that I can power heater and recover them later? Yeah, it's an awkward situation because you want the energy in your discard so that you can power heater and recover them. But you want the energy in your deck so that when you draw into your max elixir, you're going to hit them. He's only got two. He needs to hit both of those. He seems to have gone for what well, looks like one energy is going to be hitting the discard here. He does do a steam up just because he can't <laughs> attack. It's definitely not going to do anything. But there's something that's kind of like, look, if I'm going to have to discard it, I'm going to steam up even if it doesn't do anything. 
And of course, that energy also very useful for Scorched Earth. Discard a fire or fighting energy from your hand. Draw yourself two cards. Although those two cards are a fire energy and a choice band, neither of which is helping him in this particular situation. He'd really like another Volcanian EX, some Max Elixir to get some energy. Even with all the cards he saw with a Scorched Earth with a Professor Sycamore, he didn't do very much. And here is the big difference between game, you know, game one and now. Now we get the Bridget coming down. None of this end yourself. Bridget comes down. And, I mean, if he sees that one of the Zoroark is prized, we might just see two Zorua and a Tapu Koko promo here. Because, of course, we did see how much work that could put in and we might even see Benjamin going for a flying flip turn one if he can get it into the active and find a double colorless to use to attack. So Blake opted to play Scorched Earth, wanted to draw the extra cards, but uh, knowing that Benjamin has Parallel City in his deck, uh, I wonder if it's better to actually hold on to Scorched Earth. Sure, drawing the cards is great, but I think it's more valuable as a way to just kick out Parallel City. Uh, both sides of it hurt Blake's deck. The one side limits his bench, limits the number of Volcanian EX he can have. The other side just straight up limits how much damage he can do. So uh, we'll see if playing that Scorched Earth early on comes back to bite him later. An excellent point. He doesn't play any field blower, so Scorched Earth is the only way for him to get rid of those stadiums. Benjamin does get the double colorless onto the Tapu Koko, but is unable to get the Zorua out of the active, which means he doesn't get the flying flip, which is a little bit of a bonus for Blake. It means he basically gets an attack before flying flip comes out, which is very nice. And we do see the Max Elixir, and, I mean, he's playing 14 basic energy. He should hit his Max Elixirs. And so far this match, that's what's been happening. There's just a question of where he actually puts it. Yeah, I think the safe choice is you put it on the regular Volcanian. You're going to use Power Heater this turn. There's no world where you're going to Volcanic Heat Azurua on, uh, <laughs> on this turn. So uh, it, this makes it so if you somehow miss an energy attachment, you can still use Power Heater. So uh, I definitely think that first energy needs to go on the regular Volcanian. Yeah, I think that's absolutely the right call here. Power Heater is going to get you some more energy, as is energy retrieval, as it happens. Needs to make sure he's got enough in the discard, but of course with Scorched Earth, discard an energy, draw an energy. And we actually do see Turtonator GX, which did not make an appearance in the previous game, mm -hmm. coming out here. So that, that does give him some options in the future, of course. The one thing that will survive a crossing cut from a Golisopod GX and Bright Flame does 160, which means it takes one fewer steam up to get a KO on something like a Zoroark GX. Yeah, that first turn where Blake had multiple Professor's Letter and Professor Sycamore, I was wondering if he should just discard as many energy as he could to try to set up for a turn to Nitro Tank GX. Uh, usually you'd like to lead off with that Volcanian and the Power Heater, but have you ever used Nitro Tank GX for five fire energy on the second turn? It feels pretty good. Oh, I have. It is my favorite deck in the expanded format. And when you get it working, it is an absolute thing of beauty. Because, you know, you get two energy on a Volcanian, so one more and it's ready to go. Two energy onto another Volcanian, so one more and it's ready to go. And you still get another energy somewhere else on the field as well. And you basically say, look, I've got Volcanian. I'm going to have Volcanian all game. I'm going to have multiple Volcanian EX. What have you got the reason we don't see it more often is because it's it's just so difficult to get that full nitro tank gx on turn two and you can't put all of your resources into just discarding all that energy when it comes up naturally oh i'm a great fan of it it's a lot of fun so big draw here for blake gets the second volcanian ex and another energy for steam up so now double steam up is going to be a knockout with power heater on this zerua so uh, in the first game, he only got to hit the Zerua for 50 damage. This game, he gets the knockout with the double steam up, and that's going to make a big difference. Going to make a huge difference. Now he's got that KO he didn't get in the previous game, and Benjamin's not having oh. the game like he had last time. He uh, doesn't have any Zoroark on the field at the moment. He doesn't have any in his hand. He's going to do a similar play to what he did last game, though, the Guzma and Parallel City play. But looks like this turn he's bring or this game he's bringing out uh, a bigger GX as opposed to Tapu Lele GX, and he doesn't 
to have any Zoroark. He just has to flying flip and pass. And we might see a Nitro tank here, or we could even just, you know, see a Guzma to take out one of those Zorua on the bench with another power heater. He does have Guzma in his hand. The question is, does he have the two energy to power heater? He's had a lot of energy this game. I don't see it at the moment. No, it really doesn't look like it. Oh, it, no. He's got Professor Sycamore in three Guzma. Well, that's not good. <laughs> uh, not really, no. Unless he wants to just use one of the Guzma this turn and go for a very sad power heater. He's going to Sycamore <laughs> away three of his Guzma. Oh, that is rough. He does play four, but you know Benjamin's looking at that and going, nice, I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that just means that's less things you have to worry about as the game progresses. Now, don't get me wrong. You can still win with just one Guzma in your deck. Uh, you can win with zero Guzma in your deck. <laughs> but uh, your opponent knowing that their bench is mostly safe the rest of the game makes a massive difference. Makes a huge difference. Blake actually did draw his fourth Guzma <laughs> from his Sycamore. He discarded the first three, which I think there's a certain amount of irony to that. But Benjamin knows now that if he sees a single Guzma hit the discard now, his Golisopod is safe. So he can put a Golisopod on the bench and just stash it there, wait for later in the game, knowing that nothing bad is going to happen to it. Even now, he can put it on the bench knowing that it's unlikely to go wrong. So, and then Turtonator here, we might even oh, see a Shell Trap. It's a big Max Elixir. He hits it. Uh, this lets oh. Blink attack with the regular Volcanion for a knockout if he wants to. Uh, he could also just put this energy onto the Volcanion EX and uh, go for a Volcanic Heat while attaching a second energy to Turtonator GX to set up for uh, the Bright Flame. But no, looks like he's just going to settle for Power Heater. And let that Tapu Koko spread some more damage out on his field. And we saw the magic number. Oh, never mind. Triple steam up. <laughs> oh. Uh, that's 110 damage now with that power heater. Yeah. That, see, that, I often say, like, when we're commentating, one of the things we people have to bear in mind, we don't have access to as much information as the players do. We're looking at this going, oh, I don't, I don't agree with that play. We don't know he's got the free energy for the <laughs> treble power heater. And if we did, we'd be like, this is a great play. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is very, very nice from him. And we see a Scorched Earth drawing some more cards. And this is the absolute perfect situation. Taking a KO, removing a threat, accelerating energy. It's just absolutely brilliant the way he's managing to do this. He's now got potentially two Volcanium with free energy on each. Plus, he's got an energy. He has chosen to go that way. And he's got an energy on that Turtonator. And he really is building up a board full of threats. While Benjamin has two Zorua. <laughs> Yeah, much different than game number one. You do see Parallel City, and I think Blake's going to have much easier decisions on uh, which Pokemon to discard in this game. Yeah. Tapu Lele, and then, well, actually this one's tough. You can throw away the Turtonator, since it only has one energy on it, since you want as many steam-ups as possible. Or you can throw away the Volcanion with no energy on it. Yeah, I think I would personally go for the Volcanion, but it's it's another one of those decisions. You don't know what's right until you actually use it. I love the idea of having Nitro Tank later in the game or having access to, you know, that big attack from Turtonator, which is why I would keep it. But again, there might be a situation in a minute where Blake really needs free steam ups and tips are going, oh, why did I get rid of that Volcanion? It, there really is no way of knowing at this stage of the game whether that was a right play. It's just, you know, looking at your board, looking at your hand, looking at your discard, and making what you believe is the best decision for this particular moment as Benjamin drops an N and puts Blake down to four cards. Yeah, I think the biggest reason I like discarding the Volcanian EX is it was kind of a liability later in the game. With four Guzma, all of them in your discard pile, you were a little bit vulnerable to, you know, Benjamin playing a Guzma and bringing out that Volcanian EX that had three retreat and then maybe slowly whittling away your field with that Tapu Koko uh, while your Volcanian EX is just stuck there. So getting rid of that removes a potential out from Benjamin, but it does remove a steam up on Blake's side. So it has pros and cons from either side. Uh, but another big difference this game is there's no Oranguru on Blake's bench. So N is going to hurt him a little bit more with no Instruct to fall back on. 
And we do see that these Volcanian decks tend to not play things like Octillery, like Zorak. I mean, even Oranguru is slightly unusual in, in these Volcanian decks. They are one of the decks in the format that is most susceptible to N. The good news is Blake has a lot of energy on the field here and potentially enough energy to kind of finish out the game. He just needs two GXKOs to win. And Benjamin really is on the back foot here because he's not getting many KOs. Now, if he fills up his bench, gets one more bench Pokemon, Riotous Beating will get a KO. He's got the double colorless in hand as it goes. But does he bench the Mewtwo? <laughs> it means he gets a KO, but it's not a good Pokemon in this match. So it really is just filling up a bench space you'd probably rather not. Yeah, he's just going to hit for 100 and kind of force Blake to have a way to move the Volcanion. Uh, if he can't then uh, Zorark GX is just going to take a little bit of damage instead of potentially being knocked out by a volcanic heat from the Volcanian EX. And this goes back to what you were saying about the Guzma. Benjamin knows that the chances of Blake having a Guzma are, well, he's only got one in his deck. Now, as it turns out, we know he's got it in his hand, but Benjamin doesn't know that. So it really is kind of awkward and, you know, just trying to buy himself a turn, gets that up. Benjamin, even though he had the Bridget turn one this game, he just did not have the cards in his hand he needed to get set up. And this is really hurting him. Blake, and I know he was in the driver's seat last game and it didn't go his way, but uh, Benjamin's got to be thinking, now, really, you had one <laughs> in your deck. How is that even possible? Uh, but what do you go for if you're Blake here? Do you take an easy KO on a Zorua? Or do you instead, you know, try and take a KO on something like a Tapu Lele if you've got those steam ups available, knowing that that then puts you down to two prizes remaining for the game? Uh, yeah, and he's definitely gone through a lot of his resources as well. That's a lot of energy retrievals gone already. And he'll play another one here. He has to use two steam ups because he doesn't have choice band. So it's a little risky taking this knockout. Uh, you put yourself in a position where an opposing N can really mess you up, but having that Turtonator GX on the bench actually gives you a nice bit of insurance. You can double steam up here, get the knockout, go down to two prizes, and then if your opponent does end you down to two card and you, cards and you don't draw out of it, you simply retreat and Nitro Tank and kind of recharge. Yeah, I mean, I love that Turtonator option. It's kind of like we see with Twilight GX in Gardevoir decks. Just having that turn in the mid to late game where you don't really have much else going on, but you can then use that GX attack and go, you know what, even though I'm not taking a prize this turn, what I am doing is setting up my field or my deck or my hand or whatever. I mean, Decidueye GX's Hollow Hunt comes to mind as well, just so that next turn, then I'm in a really good position to try and finish this out. And... It does now, I mean, as Benjamin, you know, plays the end, we all knew he was going to play. The question becomes, does Blake actually have what he needs to finish out the game? Or is Benjamin going to do the classic thing of playing an end and mounting a fairly heroic comeback? Yeah, uh, anything can happen here. Uh, that Parallel City, once again, disrupting Blake quite a bit. He's unable to get the Oranguru down for Instruct. And he cannot bench anything like a Tapu Lele GX to uh, find him a supporter card either. So he's really just depending on what he draws straight away from the end. Uh, if he can find a Professor Sycamore, he has good odds to get, you know, the double steam up choice band for the game. But uh, without a supporter, it's going to be pretty tough. And he might have to settle for Nitro Tank GX in the next turn. Not the worst thing ever to settle for, but you're absolutely right. As it stands at the moment, he doesn't have exactly what he needs. He doesn't have a bench space free for a Tapu Lele, even if he has one. He doesn't have an Aura and Guru. Of course, time is becoming a factor here. And if Benjamin does pull out this, or sorry, if Blake does pull out this second game, it looks like we're probably heading to another tie. Ooh, we got Scorched Earth. Two cards off of this. Does he find Professor Sycamore? He finds energy oh. retrieval. Energy retrieval means he gets a couple of steam up. <laughs> Do you double steam up and then play N and hope to draw <laughs> a choice band? Oh, I mean, I would. But <laughs> I am a very aggressive player that really goes for the big KOs. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I mean, definitely it would be my play. I, I love the idea of doing this. Ah, uh, you can also Ultra Ball for Oranguru now. So you can use one of those energy for Ultra Ball fodder. 
And uh, now that Scorched Earth has gotten rid of Parallel City, you have a bench space and you can steam up once and then draw three cards. Give yourself another chance to draw Professor Sycamore, which can find you the energy and choice band you need to win the game. And also with another open bench spot, it means a third Volcanian EX and a triple steam up isn't out to win. And I love this, but it all depends what he draws off this. As always, we've choice got band, choice band, choice band, ultra oh, ball. So close. But He's does... one energy off. <laughs> oh, and he only plays one Tapu Lele in his deck because he already has he already played his Tapu Lele for the game. Yeah, he started with this game. I thought he did, which means that even that isn't an option. Oh, that's very upsetting. This is why we generally see multiple Tapu Leles played in decks. Looks like he's going for the Power Heater here rather than the Nitro Tank GX. And I don't mind this play at all because then you still only need one energy on the Turtonator to get that Bright Flame going. So it's not like it's going to be difficult to get that rolling. Of course, one thing Benjamin could potentially do here, depending on how much energy Blake's got left in his deck, he could play a Guzma to bring that Oranguru into the active, because if Blake wins this game, we're headed to a tie. But Benjamin's already one game up. If he could stall for a couple of turns, he could potentially win this match one game to zero. And depending on how much energy Blake has, depending on how many Flowstone Blake has, a Guzma on that Oranguru could actually take the game at this stage. But again, it all depends on resources, and we're not allowed to dig through their discard pile right now. That's apparently a little bit rude. <laughs> This second Parallel City, I think, is going to put Blake in a very bad position. Uh, which Pokemon do you discard here? If you discard your Volcanian EX with one energy on it, you only have access to one Steam Up, uh, which means you might not be able to knock out a Zorark GX. Uh, if you discard your Turtonator GX, it gets rid of one of your heavy hitters and uh, perhaps takes away one of your ways to get a knockout. If you get rid of Oranguru, <laughs> you can't instruct, so you're vulnerable to N. So no great options for Blake, and he decides to discard his Turtonator GX, which means now if Benjamin simply plays Guzma and brings out the damaged Volcanian EX, he could prevent a uh, enough steam-ups to knock out a Zorark GX. And I, I like keeping the Turtonator there because Turtonator only needs one steam up if you've got a choice band to get a KO on a Zorowark. Yeah. Whereas now, like you say, if a Guzma comes down and KOs that Zorowark, then you basically guarantee that outside of recovering one of those Volcanian, there just is no KO coming. And that seems to be exactly what Benjamin's doing here. And he really does seem to be putting himself in a good position. Remember, he doesn't need to win this game. He just needs to make sure that Blake doesn't win the game but as it stands at the moment he's uh, in a very favorable position and it yeah. looks like he might even be going for a Golisopod. doesn't need to be this turn remember uh, he's going for it he can go for that Volcanian EX with a three energy crossing oh, cut GX this is beautiful and uh yeah <laughs> thanks to the 20 damage from Tapu Koko the parallel city won't stop the crossing cut GX from getting an Aka they'll still do 160 with the choice band and this puts Blake in a terrible position. And I think this is why it might have been better to keep Turtonator GX on the board instead of uh, this other Volcanian EX. Now you have no real attackers powered up and ready to go. And if Benjamin keeps drawing Guzma, well, your attackers are going to keep falling. And that Golisopod is not in any danger. Blake has used all four of his Guzma in this game. So Benjamin knows that that's not a liability. Obviously, usually when you're playing against a fire deck that's got two prizes remaining, you don't want to put a Golisopod on the bench. That is not an issue when your opponent is out of Guzma. And Blake here, you see, he's not... He's not playing with that same swagger he has previously in the game. We don't see him playing particularly fast. He's searching his discard pile. He puts the Oranguru active. He's clearly not got many options. He's clearly doesn't quite know what to do right now. And I don't blame him because he just doesn't have many good options right now. No, nope, not at all. And we do see Ultra Ball for the Volcanian EX. I think Blake was hoping to draw... Another card he could play, so he could play the Choice Band uh, and another card and then instruct for two and have the Ultra Ball ready. But drawing the second Ultra Ball, he had to dump his hand and throw away the Choice Band in order to draw a significant number of cards and try to find a Professor Sycamore or something. 
Absolutely. Unfortunately, he gets an Oof. ultra ball and energy and a professor's letter for more energy. And it doesn't seem to be going Blake's way, even though he did go up by four prizes to zero. It's not just about prizes, it's about board state. You need to have enough prize, enough Pokemon on the board, enough energy, enough stuff to keep taking these prizes. And that's what Blake doesn't have right now. He's got a whole bunch of damaged Pokemon, not very much energy. And even if he can manually attach to his Volcanion twice, he's out of Guzma. And you know Benjamin's going to make sure he's got to KO a fresh Zoroark, which means two Steam Ups and a Choice Band, but he's just had to discard a Choice Band. And his route to victory, Blake, here is just... It's long, and he's running out of time. Yeah, I think with all four Guzma in the discard pile... Uh, two Volcanian EX in there as well. Unless he can find his Super Rod, this game is pretty much in Benjamin's favor at this point. Uh, I think Blake's only way to win here is he does have to attach this energy to the Volcanian EX and kind of force Benjamin's hand and say, hey, you have to Guzma this or else I'm threatening uh, game-winning Volcanic Heat at some point. But uh, then after he does that, then it can allow him to you know, attached to the other Volcanion in the next turn, Power Heater, get a second energy, and perhaps get a game-winning play where he goes Super Rod, uh, play a Sycamore, get two Volcanion EX and some energy, and use every last resource in his deck to win the game. But yeah, this has swung completely into Benjamin's favor. It did not look like he was going to win this game, but it goes back to having to discard those three Guzma early on. Uh, Professor Sycamore is one of the most powerful draw cards we've ever seen, but Here comes Guzma. it has and its drawbacks. <laughs> and now we got a fresh Zoroark GX getting a KO on that Volcanion, which firstly means Benjamin is evening up the prizes, but secondly means that there is no danger of that being KO'd next turn. There's no energy on the field, and I mentioned it as a heroic comeback, and I think that really is what's happening here. <laughs> I mean, you've got to have pretty good nerves to sit there on stream which is always a slightly more stressful environment down four prizes to zero just being like no i got this it's fine don't worry about me i can still pull this out and the other thing is it again benjamin doesn't actually have to take his final two prizes he could just sit there let the time run out let the turns run out and win this match you know two, one game to zero Blake, as it turns out, he really needs to announce his attack before his turn ends. Like right now. <laughs> like right now. Like now. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, and that means that time is going to be called on Blake's turn, which means he's only got one more turn after this. I believe he's used both of his Max Elixir. So maybe he power heaters here, but I don't. Yeah, we have had confirmation time has been called. So Blake only has one more turn after this, and he has got to get a GXKO without using a Guzma in order <laughs> to win the game. And honestly, I could see Benjamin just retreating into the undamaged Zoroark next turn and being like, go on then. Well, he even has a Mewtwo in his hand, so he could simply put down the Mewtwo, it's not a GX retreat, and say, good luck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good point. Just give, yeah, there's no Guzma. Just give him a single prize Pokemon and be like, this is an absolute guarantee that you don't win the game. Let's shake a hand, shall we? I've won this one. Yeah, so, yeah, I think an end, though. <laughs> that's play It's a good play. There's still two trades on the board for Benjamin, which, you know, helps. But, yeah, you're right. Just benching a non-GX Pokemon here and promoting it into the active will guarantee that Blake cannot win this game and Benjamin will win one game to zero. Yeah, Benjamin essentially can't lose unless he makes a mistake at this point. The Parallel City is making it so Blake can't bench enough Volcanion EX to steam up enough to knock out a Zorark GX. There's no Guzma left. There are just no options remaining for Blake. And it seems like Benjamin is going to take this game and take the series perhaps 1-0. to zero. <laughs> And uh, let's see what he decides to go for. 
He's had a bridge at there. He decided to trade it away. He does have an Ultra Ball in hand, so he could grab something like that Mewtwo to pop it into the active. He's deciding instead to bench a Tapu Lele, and I'm wondering if he's going Guzma here to drag up that Guru while promoting an undamaged Zoroark and just basically saying, right, now not only do you need to get the KO, which I'm fairly sure you can't get, you've also got to get your Oranguru out of the active, and I know that you're out of Guzma, and I know we said it a couple of times, but it really does bear repeating. The fact that Benjamin knows Blake hasn't really had access to Guzma this game has given him such a ridiculous advantage in having that knowledge and being able to play. He's not going to play this way if he thinks that Blake has Guzma, but he knows that Blake does and this has been absolutely huge for him. Yeah, even if Blake had discarded two Guzma instead of three, uh, this would have given him an opportunity to take one last knockout on the Glycify GX, which is weak to fire. <laughs> but uh, with zero Guzma available to him, Benjamin knows his bench Pokemon are safe. Uh, most people are not playing Pokemon Catcher anymore, and uh, <laughs> I don't think I've seen any Volcanian deck using Counter Catcher either, so... He's certainly in no danger of uh, losing this game at this point. Uh, absolutely not. I mean, the KO is theoretical, but I believe he's used both his Scorched Earth at this point, which means that Parallel City is staying in play, which means that Volcanion has got an absolute maximum of 190 damage, which isn't enough. I mean, maybe if Benjamin takes a KO and opens up a bench spot, and then Blake's able to get free energy. But why would he do that? He's not yeah. going to do that. He's retreating into the undamaged Zoroark and basically saying, there you go, see yeah. if you can get the KO. And we know it's, it's, it's just not possible. There is no way Blake gets a KO here. So Benjamin has wrapped up this game with a very clever play, just leaving that Zoroark in the active. And it's a mark of a good player. And you've got to feel a bit sorry for Blake. Blake played this game well. He did everything he could. But the whole game, Benjamin's just like, and a really annoyingly time Parallel City. And I'm going to Guzman that Pokemon you really needed next turn. And just all the way through the game, he's doing everything he can. And he's just been kind of as annoying as possible, which unfortunately is kind of what you need to do to win these games. Yeah, and Blake looked through his discard, which Benjamin had organized for him, and saw all four Guzma there. She's like, yeah, that's not an option. Uh, all my Scorched Earth are gone. Can't put any more Pokemon on my bench. Well, looks like that's the end of this one. Yeah, I mean, Blake is still playing out, just drawing a couple of extra cards. <laughs> he drew all of his cards. He didn't <laughs> even have enough energy left to attack. <laughs> okay. I think it's safe to say Benjamin's won this one. <laughs> <laughs> time is going to, well, time is going to run out. The free turns are going to run out. This game has not concluded. This game will not count, which means Benjamin will win this series one game to zero. And <laughs> I, I do want to point out, thanks to the judge for catching this. You actually cannot Ultra Ball if you have no cards in your, in your deck. That is an excellent play. <laughs> You're right. So uh, the judge is like, hold on. You can't actually make that illegal or relevant play. <laughs> we have great judges here. We've had a great game. Congratulations to Benjamin Pham for taking home what has been a very tight series. Both of those games could easily have gone in Blake's way and it took really good plays from Benjamin in both games to take that home. And we saw a truly great player make some truly great plays and